Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and this is the Drops episode for week four of the fantasy hockey season. Unfortunately, guys, some of these guys just aren't producing and aren't really in a position to do so, and that's why we got to consider cutting them from your team. Before we get started, though, guys, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. If you do want to take your support to the next level, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Let's jump into it now, and first on the list, guys, unfortunately, is Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators, and unless you have some IR space, it's going to be hard to hold on to Josh Norris. He could potentially be out the entire season. They're still trying to figure out the extent of his injury, if he's going to need surgery or not. It's not looking great, guys. I would still hold on to him if you have IR spots on your team right now, because it could end up being a little bit less long, but could also end up being a pretty long-term injury. So he's someone that, if you don't have any IR spots right now, might be uh, someone that you have to let go of. Then have Lucas Raymond of the Detroit Red Wings, and he has just not been producing so far this year, and he's not really being put into a position to really succeed either this year. He's not playing right now on the top line with Larkin anymore. He's actually playing on the second line with Andrew Kopp, who's not really producing right now this season, and he's not playing on the top power play either so that's kind of concerning and that's why i'm going to consider dropping lucas raymond if you're in a super deep league i'm going to hold on to him and cross your fingers but if you're in a shallower league it's time to drop him unfortunately they have ryan hartman of the minnesota wild and he's now playing on the third line and that's just not a good place for him to be guys the reason he had value last year is because he did play a lot of the season on the top line with kaprizov and with zuccarello if he's not going to be playing there, he doesn't have a whole lot of value. He's not getting that much ice time right now, not seeing top power play time either. And that's why I'm dropping Ryan Hartman at this point. He really doesn't have a lot of value anymore. Then I have Jakub Voracek of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And he's going to put up an assist every once in a while, but he's really not worth holding on your team right now. He does get top power play time, but he does not produce enough to really merit holding on 21% of leagues as teams. There's probably better streamers out there for you. And then last but not least, I have the Iron Man himself, Phil Kessel. And that was absolutely incredible watching him get that record. Also scoring his 400th career goal that same night. Absolutely fantastic to watch. But guys, he's playing on the third line in Vegas with not that great of line mates. And that's why he's not really worth owning in fantasy this year, unfortunately. Jumping into defensemen, and first I have John Klingberg, 75% rostered, and since game one where he scored two assists, he has done a whole lot of nothing, and even though he's playing on the top power play, guys, he's definitely not worth holding in 75% of leagues. At this point, I drop him in the majority of leagues. He's shown that he's just not going to do much on Anaheim, and I didn't really have super high hopes for him in the first place for Anaheim, and this kind of confirms that, guys. Klingberg is a drop. Then I have Noah Hannafin of the Calgary Flames. has no points through five games. And while he did have a really strong second half of the season last year, he's not getting top power play time. There's not really anything that indicates that he's going to produce more than he is. And he's not putting up many peripherals. So he's a very easy drop right now. And I have Jake Sanderson of the Ottawa Senators, who's someone that I was not high on going into the season at all. He's not seeing top power play time because Shabbat is on the team. And as long as he's not... He doesn't have a whole lot of value, guys, and he's not putting up a lot of peripherals either, which makes him a pretty easy drop as well. Then I have Damon Severson, and like I projected, Dougie Hamilton has taken over the top power play duties and has six points through seven games. He's looking pretty good. Damon Severson, on the other hand, is not. He's not doing a whole lot of anything, and that's why he's a drop, and he should not be 36% on. Then I have Samuel Girard of the Colorado Avalanche. And while he did have a little stretch that already scored a couple points, he's not someone that I'm really banking on scoring consistent points for me this year. And that's why I don't like owning him in fantasy at all this year, despite him getting second power play time. He's just not someone that's going to do a whole lot for you. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. If you do want to take your sport to the next level, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.